You've probably heard that using public transportation is a good way to ease our need for fossil fuels. But most buses of today are still either gas, diesel, or natural gas burning. Sure, we have some pretty interesting breakthroughs on the horizon, like battery-powered EV buses, maybe even hydrogen, and then there's the Hyperloop. But what if there was some alternative reality where public transportation required no gas and no batteries? Turns out this urban commuter fantasy was, for a brief moment, a reality thanks to the landmark vehicle, the Gyro Bus. Though short-lived, this work of true innovation answered a modern problem using ancient technology, the flywheel. So, how did this bus work? What is a flywheel in the first place? Why did the Gyro Bus fade away into history? And might this underlying technology be making a comeback? We thought we'd take a ride on the magic Gyro Bus to explore these questions today on Tuba Da Vinci. This video is brought to you by our 2-Bit tribe, our patrons and channel members that make all of this possible. More on why you should join us in just a little bit. In the 1940s, Swiss engineers at Orlikon began exploring new methods of public transportation. In particular, they were looking for something quieter and cleaner than the typical gas-guzzling buses. While other high-density metro areas began implementing trolley systems, the Swiss cities found integrating this new technology to be complicated and expensive. Trolleys require cables, restricting their mobility to predetermined routes. Running new overhead wires was costly. Plus, at the time, batteries powering the buses just weren't what they are today. Enter Jarn Storsand, chief engineer at Machine and Fabric or Lycon, who borrowed century-old technology to come up with this. From the outside, this bus seems pretty unassuming, but as like most things, it's what's on the inside that makes it truly special. With no internal combustion engine and no chemical batteries, this brilliant spark of innovation was powered by one of the oldest machines in human history, the flywheel. So what exactly is a flywheel? No, it's not something Exhibit would put on your car in an episode of Pimp My Ride. Wow, that is an old reference. Basically, a flywheel is a massive mechanical battery, meaning it converts one form of energy, electricity, chemical energy, etc., into kinetic energy. We actually did a video on all types of mechanical batteries, which you can check out here. An electric motor spins a giant mass around an axis that accelerates to incredibly high speeds, where it stores rotational energy. Once the motor is turned off, it functions like a generator, siphoning that mechanical energy from the spinning mass, reversing the process, and producing electricity, similarly to regenerative braking in electric cars. Interestingly, this ability makes the mechanical flywheel a rechargeable energy storage system. The amount of energy in a flywheel can be described by the following equation where the rotational energy is equal to one half times the rotational inertia times the rotational velocity squared. <laughs> Let's break this down a little bit to better understand it. The rotational inertia is how difficult or easy it is to get a body spinning. The equation for the rotational inertia is as follows, where the m is the mass in kilograms and r is the distance of the mass from the center of rotation squared in meters. If we substitute this value for rotational inertia into our energy equation, we get this. So let's say knowing this equation, we decide to create the world's greatest flywheel. First of all, clearly adding mass will increase our energy storage. But as you can see, there are actually two smarter ways of doing this. The first would be to increase the angular velocity or the speed in rotation. Because it increases with the square, if we spun our flywheel twice as fast, we'd actually have four times as much energy. Similarly, if we have a squared value for r, or the distance from the point of rotation, that means that the further away the mass is from its center, the harder it is to spin, and inversely, the more energy it will have once it's spinning. You're probably familiar with the analogy of the figure skater, who speeds up when their arms are in and slows down when they put their hands out. So if space was no object, it would make more sense to have a lightweight material like carbon fiber on the inside of our disc, holding all of our heavier mass as far away from the center as possible. If we had a theoretical one kilogram weight on a very light two meter rope, it would have as much energy as a four kilogram weight on a one meter long rope. So you can have either a wider flywheel or a heavier flywheel. And there's that famous engineering compromise we always have to make. With flywheels, it's all about finding that sweet balance between rotational mass, diameter, and angular velocity. To reach their highest potential, modern flywheels have a few key components. First, there's a huge rotating cylinder on top of what's known as a stator, the stationary part of a rotary system. Bearings support the rotor, helping it resist forces so that it can stay steady while spinning at high velocities. 
Friction is kryptonite for flywheels. Early systems required high-performance lubricants in order to work properly. Modern systems use magnetic bearings that levitate, which basically eliminates any need for maintenance while reducing losses in efficiency. To further improve efficiency, most modern flywheels are stored inside a vacuum chamber to reduce drag and friction. While early models were made of steel, modern flywheels are made of more exotic materials like carbon fiber on the inside, allowing more heavy masses to be further away from the center of gravity for obvious reasons. Flywheels attach to motor generators where they can then supply power to and from the energy grid. Today's flywheels can reach speeds of up to 100,000 RPM or revolutions per minute, allowing them to store significantly more energy. Now this sounds kind of scary to you. Remember that trying to store a large amount of energy in a small space always is. Much like a huge barrel of gasoline or a large compressed tank of hydrogen or a huge battery pack, the key really is engineering mitigations and safety considerations. What's arguably most amazing about flywheels is that they're hardly new. In fact, they made their debut in potter's wheels before 2000 BC. Talk about a throwback. Flywheels continue to make their mark during the industrial revolution in combustion engines to smooth out the power delivered in driving devices. In fact, flywheels can still be found in modern transmissions, but we'll get back to that. First, let's get back to our magic bus. With the incredible power and efficiency of flywheels, they seem to be the perfect option for Switzerland's emerging transportation problem. Finally, an option for a zero emission electric bus, and best of all, no cables or strings to hold it down. The bus featured an electric motor which was fed on grid energy while the bus was stopped at stations. The motor then revved up the flywheel, which stored all that energy to keep the bus moving. Once fully charged, around 3000 RPM, these buses could travel up to 6 kilometers at speeds between 50 and 60 kilometers an hour, depending of course on the bus load and travel conditions. One bus installed in Verdun Le Bains reportedly traveled up to 10 kilometers on a single charge. So how did the bus keep moving? Charging stations along the route would feed the bus juice from the grid through three booms mounted on the vehicle's roof. A four and a half kilometer route could have as many as four charging stations. Charging from a standstill could take up to 40 minutes, but once the wheel was up to speed, adding additional power to the wheel took as little as two to five minutes, about the time it would take to drop off and pick up passengers. This meant that operating a traditional bus route where loading and unloading passengers takes a few minutes and most stops are only a few miles apart was completely within reach. The wheel itself sat right inside the bus's interior, right alongside passengers. The one and a half ton wheel rode in an airtight enclosed chamber filled with hydrogen gas to reduce pressure to keep resistance low. But having a massive spinning wheel sitting inside a bus created a few unforeseen side effects. Some good, some not so much. On one hand, the flywheel reportedly made a notably smoother ride, according to passengers. No clunky gear shifts, no gas engine and vibrations. But on the other hand, a gyroscopic effect caused the bus to resist changes in direction, which made things like taking turns far more challenging. At its peak, cities all over Switzerland began adopting these new buses from the 1940s through the 60s. They even made their way down to Belgian Congo, which ended up being the largest fleet of 12 vehicles running over four routes. Initially, the quieter, cleaner, unrestricted bus was a hit. But there was a handful of reasons why we don't see gyro buses around the world today. For one thing, the wheels often ran into a significant issue related to wear and tear, especially in Congo where drivers would often take shortcuts across unpaved roads which impacted the bearings and ultimately destroyed the system. Sensible minds also grew concerned over placing a massive steel wheel spinning at incredibly high speeds in close quarters with passengers. A bus carrying 20 passengers required a 3-ton flywheel. But eventually, it was energy consumption that served as the final nail in the coffin. The bus operators determined that 3.4 kilowatt hours per kilometer for each bus on the road was simply unaffordable. And so the wheels have stopped spinning for the gyro bus. Today only one bus remains fully intact at the Flemish Tram and Bus Museum in Antwerp. So was this also the end of the line for flywheels? Well, not quite. While flywheels likely won't be showing up in buses or EVs in the future, they have found their way into other areas, in particular grid energy storage. To this day, flywheels utilize far more environmentally friendly materials than many chemical batteries. They also possess high energy density and efficiency with numbers that can reach up to 90%. They're resistant to fluctuations in temperature and they can last an extremely long time, decades with little or no maintenance. Flywheels found in the James Watt steam engine 
have been working non-stop for over 200 years. For these reasons, this ancient technology has found new life in uninterrupted power supplies for providing backup power to essential loads. They've been used in aircraft, rail transportation, even NASA's G2 spacecraft, and the ISS to hold the space station at a fixed attitude relative to the Earth's surface. Where they really shine is in providing ancillary services in grid applications for frequency regulation and power fluctuation support. This is especially true for renewables like solar and wind, where output can vary throughout the day. The Beacon Power Building in Stevenson, New York, has the world's largest flywheel energy system. The 20 megawatt system is a true landmark in flywheel energy storage technology, as similar systems have only been applied in testing and small-scale applications. Recent studies have even evaluated the flywheel's efficacy in helping offset stochastic changes in wind energy. Research suggests that wind turbines equipped with flywheel technology as an energy storage option have better energy output during peak demand times. And while flywheels may not end up living inside EVs themselves, Israeli company Chakratech is developing EV fast charging stations which use what they termed kinetic batteries, utilizing flywheel technology. As we've often said on this channel, there likely will never be a one-size-fits-all means of energy storage and production. And while technology like lithium-ion batteries are making great strides in bringing renewables to the forefront, we can't rule out other technologies, even if it's from several thousand years ago. The flywheel is sort of like Keith Richards. We're not sure how, but it's still here long after we thought it would be, and it seems to be stronger than ever. But let us know what you think. Are flywheels a superfly retro technology we should be showcasing? Or are there better, older forms of tech that you can think of that deserve to make a comeback? Sound off in the comment section below. So that is a deeper look into the gyro bus and flywheels. Thank you so much to all of our viewers and especially to our 2-Bit Tribe members, the people who support us on Patreon and as a YouTube channel member. If you want to be a rock star supporter of this show, join us on Discord, talk about future videos, help write scripts, and just generally chat with us, come join us and become a Tribe member by joining us on Patreon or as a channel member. And also take a look around and check out our other videos. Odds are there's probably some other videos you're going to like. I'm Ricky with Tuba Da Vinci, and just remember the future is going to be awesome.